Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is a diplomatic mission to the planet of the Greys. As some of you have noted in your comments, I have kind of kept my distance away from um, the council and getting involved in larger affairs as much as possible. I've kind of been burnt out from my experiences during those past months. And uh, I, I just kind of wanted to have some of my own experiences again, um, time, travel, space, just regular astral projections. So that's what I've been doing until just the other night, I left my body with full intention to pursue my own experience when I saw my angel guide standing there. Um, he took me by surprise and I kind of almost swore. <laughs> and I said, whoa, um, why, are, why are you here? And he looked at me and said, um, I've got some bad news for you. The council wants to see you. He knows me. I said, why? Uh, the war is over. I just, I just want to do my own thing now. He said, well, they want to, you know, thank you for your contribution and, and everything you, you did to help out. I said, okay, I mean, that's nice, but I just did what I had to do. No more, no less. Um, just tell them uh, they're welcome. Or if you want to do a whole, you know, Chick-fil-A thing, tell them uh, my pleasure. Whatever. Just tell them I, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, he knows me, but you can ask, you can ask my wife, you can ask my daughter. I hate these types of enforced social occasions. Um, I, I, you know, I'm of the baby boom generation. For the most part, we agreed to do a job. You agreed to pay us. And that was fine. We didn't need, and I certainly didn't want any extra acknowledgement. Uh, of any kind. Uh, I just I just didn't need it. Um, I mean, it kind of harkens back to when I was in elementary school, and I was always the second smartest kid in the class. There was always this guy named Jeff who always did a little bit better than I did. So when they had those stupid award ceremonies, which my parents drug me to, uh, he would get the number one honors and they'd give me uh, a second place certificate, which I hated and got rid of it as soon as I got home. Because to me, it was just rubbing it in. Now, I know I should have just been grateful for my achievement and, and, and happy for him. But I was, I was a kid. And, you know, I'd love to say I had those higher minded thoughts, but I didn't. And um, I actually felt a little weird, though, because later on when we went to junior high school, his parents got divorced and he just fell into a hole, a depression and ended up smoking marijuana and, you know, and just falling off. So I was always I always felt a little cheated as selfish and weird as that sounds, because I never got a chance to actually beat him honestly because he just fell apart. At any rate, I don't like, I don't like acknowledgement. I don't like that type of over-the-top praise. Look, I'm just going to do what I have to do, and, and that's fine. That's fine. I don't need any extra awards or surprises. I mean, I know, I know people always talk about the, you know, some of the younger generations and their participation trophies, and nobody wants to get upset. They want to make sure everybody's happy. But when I grew up, that, I was a baby boomer. That's not the way it went. You either won or you were a loser. And there was no icing on that barren cake. Okay, so I I didn't seem to have much of a choice. So I said, okay, um, let's just make this brief then. And so with that, he took me and I lost consciousness. And then I appeared before the council 
Um, I saw the faces that used to be there. Um, and uh, so they greeted me when I arrived. And as my angel guide had said, they thanked me for my help and participation in the conflict and in dealing with, you know, the destructive forces of the master. And I said, yes, uh, you're welcome. That's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. My pleasure. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, uh, uh, can I go now? Uh, and that's when they hit me with the number two punch. They said, well, we didn't just want you to come here for that purpose. We've lost some contact with what you term the planet of the grays. And they're part of our group of civilizations and we're concerned about why we haven't had communication with them. I said, okay, I mean, that does sound concerning, but why are you talking to me about that? He said, well, because of the, the assistance that you gave them uh, during the conflict, advising them to hold back a substantial portion of their forces. So when the surprise attack came from the master, they were able to defend themselves, that you're a minor celebrity there now, and we're hoping that you'll act as a representative or a diplomat for the council and to go there and see if, if there's some way you can get them back in contact with us. I just put down my head and I said, look, um, you know, I still have a physical body. I, I don't know that I have the time to take on a job like this. Besides a diplomat, all they ever do is talk and nothing ever gets done. Uh, I don't know that I want a job like that. And they said, well, you know, we really believe you're the best, you're the best soul for this job. And um, I didn't feel like I had much of a choice at that instant. So I said, okay, fine, I'll take the job, but I don't want any notes. I don't want anybody whispering in my ear. If you're going to give me this job, then let me do it as I see fit. And that's all there's to it. And they said, yes, fine. You can, uh, you have full autonomy. I said, okay, fine. Um, when do I go? And they said, well, how about right about now? And with that, I lost consciousness again. And when I finally regained consciousness, I was a little out of sorts because I was in one of those anti-grav type hovercrafts that the Greys use on their own planet. Uh, they've got a number of ways to get around. Uh, that's one of them. And I know it, it somehow uses an anti-grav device to move. And I was moving fairly fast over the surface of the planet. When I looked over, there was Ken. And he almost, uh, almost crashed the thing when I suddenly popped up there. And uh, he's like, Ick, what are you doing here? I said, they sent me, the, the council sent me um, because we haven't, uh, we haven't heard from your planet in uh, quite a while. We wanted to know what was going on. And he said, well, um, thanks for coming. <laughs> I thought to myself, okay, yeah, sure. Um, but, you know, we're having a problem right now with, with our uh, with our ruling group, because um, there's several new counselors because we lost some during the, the, the war. And when they died, they weren't near a uh, regeneration unit, so we weren't able to regenerate them. So they're lost for good. So three new ones had to be appointed. And I think they're trying to subvert um, this, our planet and, and, and the, the, um, the, 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 they're just the, the basic ruling of the way we've always done things here. They're trying to overturn, uh, everything that we've ever believed in and in our culture, our, uh, our belief systems. And, and they've, they've tried to, uh, remove us 
from the council. And they're saying that it's, it's evil and it caused the war and we should be on our own and we should be reasserting ourselves to be a more dominant power in the galaxy. And um, I have decided to contact some of my old um, fellow uh, expeditionary force people and that we're going to see if we can stop what the council is doing. So I thought, are you, are you trying to wage a coup? Uh, and at first he didn't understand what I was trying to talk about because I don't think that is really a word that is, translates easily into their language. They're such custom-bound people that that basic thought of overturning rule is is just kind of outside of their belief system. And so he had a trouble understanding what I was talking about. And so he just looked at me quizzically. He says, well, we have to talk with them and 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 try to try to repair the council. That's all he could say to. I said, okay, um, well, I'm along for the ride. Since I'm a representative now of the council, I'll just act as an observer. And he said, actually, it's probably good that you're here because you're you're known now on uh, on this planet and because you helped to save us. Uh, so your presence alone may be a big benefit to us because it shows that that the council is involved and that it it, uh, it cares about our participation as part of the overall galactic council. Uh, so I said, sure, whatever, whatever I can do. Um, we travel for a little bit longer and then, uh, he landed and we walked into this kind of a circular type of, uh, metallic building. It had, a a glass ceiling of sorts. And, um, so the sunlight was able to come in, but it, it was cool inside the circular room. Inside this fairly large room was a large group of, I guess what he termed their expeditionary force. And these were troops, which he said had been loyal to him because before he chose to join the agricultural core up in the, the Northern part of the planet, they had been loyal um, people to him. And so when he called, they came. Some of them appeared to be armed, which I wasn't used to seeing because they don't normally have weapons uh, on the planet. They're only used when they're off planet. Uh, and so I mentioned that to Ken. I said, what's what's with the weapons? He said, well, they're just here as a precaution. They, they paralyze voluntary uh, muscles and nerves. Um, so they don't actually hurt the individual. They just paralyze them um, so that they can't uh, cause any problems. I said, uh, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. I wish we had something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, he spoke to them for a while. Uh, I missed, I think, a lot of what he was saying um, because some of it just didn't translate or else he was speaking too fast and it was kind of hard for me to keep up. But it seemed that he was um, dwelling on the basic plot point that tradition, which is very important to them, was being overturned and that they had to do something to regain um, command over their planet. And so as he talked, I kind of sensed the energy in the room uh, growing and um, the greys, they exhibit their emotions differently than humans do. Um, basically, it, it just seems like they started humming and, and the more Ken talked, the more their humming reached a higher pitch, which is probably, I don't know, their version of we agree with you, we applaud, uh, maybe a little bit of we're upset, um, we're with you, we're in coordination with you. Um, 
it's hard sometimes to interpret these sociological uh, things from other civilizations, but that was my best impression. Um, so at that point, uh, I could tell he started pulling aside a few of the uh, individual commanders who were going to lead individual units, and they started making plans for how they were going to enter the council district because the council district is set apart from the city itself. Um, it's surrounded by a wall and uh, it's not like it's heavily guarded. It's just, it's like it's a sacred space. So no one would typically keep you out, but you know not to trespass. So it definitely is, is probably a huge jump for them to, to do what they were planning. And I could sense that this was probably a once in a thousand lifetime situation. And I was here to witness it all. Uh, and um, since this is going a little long, I'm going to have a part two and let you know what happened. Uh, if you like this first part, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, make sure that bell is on so you know when the Wednesday afternoon and the Saturday morning uh, episodes uh, are, uh, are released. And uh, questions and comments are welcome, obviously. And uh, don't forget, we have playlists, all kinds of playlists. Astral Club playlists, we've got space and aliens, we've got time travel playlists. So, you know, any of those areas that you're interested in, the videos are there, so you could review them anytime you felt like it. Uh, and as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.